This is Mrs. Alexander and this is your 5.14 identifying bacteria front load using gram staining. First of all, let's talk about what a gram stain is and why it's important to know. The main reason we're going to learn about gram staining is so that you can understand how doctors and pathophysiologists identify bacteria and know how to treat it. So when you go into the doctor and you've got a sore throat, they need to figure out if it's a strep throat, maybe it's a staph infection, or maybe you just have the flu, a virus that can't be killed with antibiotics. In order to figure out that, we have to first gram stain bacteria. This method of gram staining will allow us to see instantly, does it look purplish blue or does it look pinkish red? Those two colors can instantly tell us what class or what category of bacteria we're going to need to follow in order to figure out what antibiotics can kill it. It was first discovered by this guy named Hans, Hans Christian Graham. He developed this staining method. It's called a differential stain because it stains bacteria two different colors depending on what kind it is. And so we have gram positive bacteria which shows up as purple or purplish blue and we have gram negative bacteria that looks pinkish red. Again, the whole purpose of gram staining is so that we can figure out how to kill the bacteria. The best way I can go over how to kill bacteria is using an analogy for you and some examples. Gram positive bacteria have thicker walls which allow them to protect, be protected for a while. It's capable of absorbing a lot of foreign material but eventually it can be corrupted and just like a fence would absorb moisture and eventually break down in mold, that's how gram positive bacteria work as well. So we can use mold, bacteria um, will actually die if it's gram positive if we treat it with a mold called penicillin. You've probably heard of penicillin before. A lot of people are allergic to it as well. Whereas gram-negative bacteria are harder to treat with antibiotics because their outer coating is really resistant to antibiotics, kind of like a bulletproof vest or a Kevlar vest that's very sturdy and strong and they become resistant easily. Some examples of gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria on the left, Streptococcus pneumonia, Staphylococcus aureus, and Clostridium botulinum. Those are three examples. It shows you kind of what they do, upper respiratory infections, food poisoning, um, those are not things you really want, but you can get rid of them with antibiotics. Uh, a little quick fun fact, Botox treatments, those are the treatments that some women get injected in their face to make their wrinkles go away or to make their lips look nice and plump. That is actually using the bacteria, Clostridium botulinum, injected into the face and the chemical reaction in which the bacteria starts to fester underneath the face makes the face swell. And that swelling will temporarily relieve wrinkles. A couple weeks it goes away and women go back for more Botox. You can probably look up really horrible examples of botched um, Botox, Botox that didn't go right, that made them look really horrible. Gram negative on the right are bacteria, again, that are harder to treat, things like E. coli, which can cause urinary tract infections and upset stomach, diarrhea, Pseudomonas arginosa, which can cause hospital-acquired pneumonia, Neisseria gonorrhea, a type of sexually transmitted infection, and Clospella pneumonia, which is another urinary tract infection uh, cause. Those are harder to treat, take stronger antibiotics that bacteria is less resistant to. Here are a few analogies for you. Again, gram positive bacteria is like a heavy wooden fence with thick and wide planks surrounding a yard. It protects that yard from certain things, whereas a gram negative bacteria is real thin layers, but bulletproof vest, which is super hard to get through and protects the bacteria very durably. So if you want to penetrate these surfaces, you're going to use different weapons, kind of like a saw could cut through the wooden fence, whereas a bullet can't shoot through the Kevlar vest, but it could shoot through a uh, wooden fence. So just think about kind of how you would try to get rid of those things, those, those coatings, and that's how the doctors kind of decide what would work and what wouldn't. For example, fire can burn down a fence really easy, whereas it's going to heat up the Kevlar vest, but it's not going to really burn what's inside. So just some analogies for you. Here's a picture of those inner layers, the, the thick wooden fence versus the thin Kevlar vest I was speaking about. On the left, thick, thick red layer in there. The color doesn't really have anything to do with the gram positive and negative staining, it's just an illustration. But on the left, gram positive bacteria have a thick, thick peptoglycan layer. On the right, gram negative bacteria have a thin, sturdy, durable peptoglycan layer, and they have two membranes surrounding that layer. It's sandwiched between. Whereas, in contrast, on the left, gram-positive's only membrane is on the inside of the peptoglycan. So peptoglycan's on the outside. So these two cells differ based on the amount of peptoglycan. We'll get more into peptoglycan later, but peptoglycan, the thickness 
is what determines if it's positive or negative. This next picture, again, color doesn't have to do with the staining process here. It's just an illustration. It shows the thick peptoglycan on the positive, and it shows the thin peptoglycan on the negative. Again, remember, negative have two membranes, whereas positive only have one. Now, when we actually go to stain these cells, we're going to put a blue and a, pur a bluish purple stain on both of them. We're going to rinse them, then we're going to stain them both with pink. Well, if you're already purple, stained purple, you're not going to really see the pink through it. However, once we rinse the bacteria, Gram negative will lose their purple color because of their peptoglycan layer, because of how thin it is. Um, the, the agent that we use to rinse it is actually called alcohol, ethyl alcohol, and it'll actually remove all the purple from the gram negative. And then when we stain them both pink, you'll see a pink color showing through. I like to remember gram negative, like the negative side of the bacteria, the negative wire, those are always like red. So the negative side of the electrophoresis machine or the negative wire or negative sign on a battery, all red. So reddish pink is the color the negative will show up. Purple is positive. Here's another illustration. I'd like you to draw this illustration in your lab notebook. So either pause here and get out some paper, or you can keep listening while you get out your paper. On the left, I'd like you to draw an illustration of gram-positive bacteria. What's important here is that you show it has one thick layer. Label that layer peptoglycan. Color it purplish blue. The bottom picture under gram positive shows a side view of the bacteria with the peptoglycan thick layer on top and the membrane on the bottom. Now draw the gram negative on the right. Gram negative bacteria should be colored pinkish red. The peptoglycan layer should be thin sandwiched between two membranes. If you'd like to put all those labels on, like the capsule, the outer membrane, inner membrane, that's great if you'd want, but make sure that you understand two membranes, one thin peptoglycan sandwiched between. Pause here as long as you need in order to finish drawing these illustrations. Here's an overview of the gram staining process. So actually, let's get into what is the gram stain, how are you going to do it, you're going to do it in class. Let's watch a short little video about it and uh, go further in depth. Here are the steps that you're going to use in class in order to gram stain. You're going to put the bacteria on the slide, usually using a drop of water and your bacteria from your plate. You're going to mix it all around with a loop. You're going to let it dry. Usually, you just let it sit there for five or ten minutes. Um, then you're going to need to pass the slide through the heat in order to fix it or immobilize the bacteria. It allows the bacteria to stick to the slide so that when you rinse it, it doesn't wash off. It doesn't kill the bacteria. It's only for about three seconds back and forth, but a heat fix is very important. Then there are some stains we're going to use. The first stain is called crystal violet. It's purple. Then we're going to rinse it. The next stain is not actually a stain. It's a um, chemical called iodine that will actually work with the crystal violet to cause a complex to occur to make it stick inside the gram-positive cells. The next step is to rinse. Then we're going to decolorize. The decolorize is a clear liquid called ethyl alcohol. This will only remove the purple stain from any negative cells. Gram-negative cells the alcohol will work on them. It won't really touch the gram-positive cells. They'll still be purple. As you can see in figure three in the middle, the positive cells are still purple. The negative cells are now colorless. So and then we're going to add the counter stain. The counter stain is a pinkish red called safranin, safranin, however you'd like to pronounce it. That's a pinkish red stain. It will go into the gram-positive cells as well, but because they're so dark purple, you won't see it show through. Whereas the colorless gram-negative cells are now going to show up as pink and red. You're going to rinse again. Again, you're rinsing between each step. Even after the alcohol, you're going to rinse. Every stain is going to stay on there for about a minute, except for the alcohol. That is a couple drops added and then instantly rinsed. Here's a side version uh, picture of that process happening, showing you as the cells turn different colors what happens, showing you rinsing and decolorizing. And I'd also like us to watch this video at the end of the um, slideshow so that you guys know how to do the gram staining procedure. Here's what gram negative cells, negative pinkish red, look like under the microscope. Understand that gram negative cells have a space where the peptoglycan is. There's a membrane on top, membrane on bottom. That space between is called the periplasma. Here's what gram positive cells. Positive are purple, purplish blue. Remember, there's no outer membrane, just one membrane, a thick, thick layer of peptoglycan. That thick layer is actually 20 times more than it is in gram negative cells. Can you use your knowledge and tell the difference? Which ones are positive, which ones are negative? Remember, negative, reddish, pink, positive, purple. 
then you need to make sure you're able to tell me if it's a gram positive or negative and tell me if it's rod or circular shaped. But you need to use the correct terms, bacillus for rod and caucus for circular or spherical. Here's what a gram positive bacillus looks like, so purple rods. Here's what a negative bacillus or red rods, pink rods. Again, caucus is a spherical or circle shape. Here's what a caucus gram positive looks like, purple circular cells. Here's what a caucus gram negative slide looks like. This is negative or reddish pink circular cells. Here's a comparison chart between what gram positive versus gram negative look like. Um, you'll have to be able to identify one on the EOC and on the test. So now you're going to um, go ahead and get a turn to gram stain in class. But before you gram stain, I want you guys to watch these video clips and I want you to do a simulation. The simulation is really cool. It's kind of hard to do. You got to do it perfect in order to be able to see the answers. So go to this link and walk through the steps. Remember when you heat fix your bacteria, which should be the, the first step, you're only going to run it through three times for a total of three seconds. In class, we're going to go over the results. So after you're done gram staining, go ahead and use the rest of this um, PowerPoint to fill in your results and your data table on your Word doc. This is what our E. coli is going to look like under the microscope. I see gram negative because I see pinkish red, and they are rod shaped. Rhizophilia is a gram positive or purple bacteria, and they're actually caucus shaped in big old clumps called staph, staphylococcus. And a sample. In class, you're going to discover that Anna sample is red rods, so it's a gram-negative bac bacillus-shaped bacteria. Please add those three result slides to your 514 document before you are done with this activity. And now we're going to watch a video on how to gram stain. The gram stain is the most widely employed staining method in microbiology. It is a differential stain because it divides bacteria into two classes, gram-positive and gram-negative. In the first step of the gram stain procedure, cells from a fresh culture are transferred to a clean slide and allowed to dry. If the cells are on an auger plate, they should first be transferred to a liquid medium for dilution. A drop the of water. cells should form a thin, barely visible film. This can be achieved by smearing cells obtained from the surface of an auger medium or from a liquid culture. Fresh cultures must be used because as cells age, they lose their ability to retain the stain. The cells are then fixed to the slide by passing slightly above the flame of a Bunsen burner. Above for three After seconds. passing above the flame, the slide should feel warm when touched to the back of the hand, but should not be too hot. The fixed cells are then stained with the basic dye, crystal violet, for 30 to 40 seconds. The slide is then rinsed with water to remove excess stain. At this point, all cells appear purple under the microscope. Next, a solution of Graham's iodine is added and retained on the slide for about one minute. The iodine combines with the crystal violet to form a di-iodine complex, thereby decreasing its solubility within the cell. At this point, the cells still appear purple. The cells are then decolorized by washing with ethanol or acetone. This is the differential step. Gram-positive bacteria retain the crystal violet, whereas gram-negative bacteria do not. The ethanol or acetone should be added drop-wise, with the slide tilted at an angle, until the drop coming off the edge of the slide just starts to become colorless. Even gram-positive cells can lose the crystal violet iodine complex during prolonged excessive decoloration. Excess ethanol is then washed off with water. When viewed under the microscope, gram-positive cells appear purple, and gram-negative cells are colorless. Finally, the rinsed cells are covered with the counterstain safranin for 20 to 30 seconds. This stains the gram-negative bacteria pink. After rinsing with water, the slide is dried with filter paper. When viewed microscopically, the gram-positive bacteria are purple, and the gram-negative bacteria are pink. The reason the gram positive looks purple is because the purple gets trapped in that thick layer of peptoglycan and goes down into the one cell membrane in gram positive cells. In contrast, gram negative cells look pink or red because the decolorization process actually dehydrates that thin layer of peptoglycan, which is sandwiched between two cell membranes, leaving it 
empty or colorless so that the pink safranin can get in and color it. So you see pink at the end instead of purple. 